So now we're recording and we're screen sharing and all is well with the universe. So arrays and collections. So an array, we've seen them before, an array is an index set of the same type. It's basically a stack of data of the same kind. Could be primitives, could be objects, could even be other arrays. Now for indexing, every element of an array has an index. That just means a number we can use to reference it. So the way to think about it, and we're gonna pop into paint here. The best way to think about it, imagine if you have a filing cabinet. Okay, and we're gonna look at it from a very, very slightly 3D perspective. Okay, because we can do that. Boom, there's our filing cabinet. Now, the front of the filing cabinet, we have some drawers, right? And I'm gonna do a dot, dot, dot in the middle to symbolize dot, 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 that there can be many. So the indexing, just like with the string, index zero, index one, index two, all the way down to index n minus one. Okay, so this is an array of length n. Okay, so just like a string, if the string had length n, its last usable index would be n minus one. Same thing for any array, starts with index zero, goes down to n minus one. So whatever we put in these drawers, we can reference through the array. So suppose our array is named array because we're very creative. We reference the contents of the first index as array zero, okay? The second index as array one, and so on to, and so on to array n minus one for the last index, okay? That's what it is now. The way the file cabinet analogy works, right? Each of the drawers in the cabinet hold the same kind of data, okay? So when you create, or actually when you declare the array, you specify that type, right? For example, for an array of ints would be int array array for, for doubles, for example. Oops, I, yeah, that's weird. Or for doubles, double array, array, okay? Then we know that each drawer in the array is gonna hold the same kind of data. All right, I gotta bring the dog in or he's gonna park himself by the window and freak out when another dog walks by. All right, come on. Come on in. All right. So now we have dog. Okay. Does this stuff make sense so far? What we're talking about arrays, I hope all of this makes sense. Questions on this? Shout them out. I'm not really watching other mechanisms. I'll check. Anything? Oh, you haven't been seeing me. Here I am. Okay. Nothing? This is all good? Super clear? Okay, well, let's move on. So again, each of these drawers in the array holds the same type of data. They could all hold ints, or they could all hold doubles, or they could all hold bytes, or they could all hold strings as objects, or they could all hold arrays. For example, right? simple case example here, Suppose your data requirements are for an int array at each index, right? You want to store an array of arrays. That's no problem. You would just declare it like 
int, whoop, I hit the wrong thing, I hit underline. Int, and I hit underline again. Array, array, array. Okay, and that would mean that essentially this first pair of square brackets would mean that you have an array, and the second pair would mean that each entry in the array is itself an array. Okay, so that's how you would do that. But we'll get more into the syntax in just a minute. Now, the point of indexing, what makes it a wonderful, wonderful thing, is that then you don't need to distinctly name and reference each element. For example, if you had a gigantic stack of variables of type string, right? So say you have an, a, a database of user information and you have millions or even billions of strings, you would have to give them all distinct names. It would be a colossal pain in the ass. And if you wanted to write code that referenced all those that basically searched through the list, you'd have to actually stretch out this, your code into some bizarrely long uh, tests, like if string number one equals this, or string number two equals this, or string number three, for however many billions of strings you had, it would be insane. The other nice thing is it facilitates looping through arrays, right? Rather than do a long individual check to compare each variable, instead you can write a very, very compact setup where you simply say, uh, with a for loop, start at index zero, continue until you reach the last index, and at every iteration of the loop, increment it. Okay, so that's the kind of looping you can do. The code then also becomes very compact. So arrays are wonderful, uh, especially for large-scale data uses. Uh, they're pretty much essential. So we'll dive into this a little bit more. So imagine if you wanted to model three objects of the same type, say see three strings. If you didn't have an array, each string would need a distinct name and would need specific references within the program. So imagine some problems that might arise from this. Number one, suppose you don't know in advance how many objects you're going to need, right? So imagine if you're reading uh, customer invoice data and an invoice might have one item or it might have many items, right? It might have like a hundred different things the person buys. You don't know, but if you didn't know and you wanted to be safe, you would have to set up your code to take the worst case situation and say the maximum possible number of things that you might have to deal with. Second problem, what if objects are dynamically created or overwritten as the program runs? You'd have to come up with new variable names for each of those. Uh, so essentially, instead of uh, having an array that holds data about whatever goes on in the program, you'd have to build up a giant data structure that holds all possible things the program might ever have to deal with. You would have to have a structure that's very large, occupies a lot of memory, and would therefore be very expensive because you need all the memory to hold it. And then add on to that, what if there are many objects, not just three, right? Again, if there are, you're talking about billions or even millions, in many cases, even thousands would be a nightmare. Writing all those comparison statements and referencing the variables would just be a, a horrible, horrible thing. So if you have a small number of variables, yeah, it's totally fine to just give them all individual names and work with them. But once your data starts getting large, especially uh, if you don't know in advance how large it's going to be, you really need arrays to make your programs work. Okay. Within the Java language, an array is actually a special type that contains an indexed set of a type. So in effect, when you create an array, it's like you're making a new class with a set of same type data members. Okay, so for example, back to paint. If we wanted to make a standalone class that had three strings, right? We can call it string array. And we could give it string A, string B, string C, right? And this is almost what Java does, right? Except that the way we've written it here, each of these strings, we can only reference through its actual name. Instead, Java, what Java does is more like this. It effectively, again, creates like a, a custom class for each array but the strings are actually numbered, right? So string zero and string one and string two. So anytime we want to reference them, right? The contents of the string could change, 
but these references will always be there and we can use the numbers again to loop through the array. You can't do that if you gave them standard variable names because there's no real way to say whatever these names are, they say if A is less than B or B is less than C, it wouldn't make sense. But with numbers, the comparators make sense. Okay. Now, unlike objects, an array has a length attribute that holds the number of array elements, right? So an ordinary object, right, if we made it like this, note, no length attribute. Okay, but over here we do, right? So in fact, within our array, we have this. Okay, so basically when you create the constructor for this, it's gonna do something like, I'm gonna, whoop, I'm gonna put in some pseudocode here in just a second. Grab this thing and port it, but it doesn't want to go. Eh, forget it. Let's do it this way. Okay. In effect, what we're doing for the constructor method in the array is something like this string array int size. Okay, and then back within here we're doing this dot length equals size, and then something like, and create strings, right? And list strings. In effect, the constructor would like build the class itself. But when we specify that uh, the array has three things, right? The class that gets written will have three things. And then when we create it, it'll have, again, this length attribute, okay? So there's an, uh, there's, it's very similar syntactically to how regular objects are created, but we're using the array capabilities to essentially write a custom class. And for this reason, as we'll see in a minute, because we're essentially creating a custom class every time we make an array, just like strings, right? Remember the magic word for strings? You couldn't change them in place because strings are not unchangeable, not final. Uncommutable? Exactly, immutable, very good. Arrays are also immutable. You can't just create a new array in place with, the same, with a different size. You actually have to build a new array. So for the same reason as strings, arrays are also immutable. Very good. It's good when people remember things. Okay, so array has the following specifications, a name, a type, and a length. When you create an array, you have to give it those three things. When you declare it, you give it a name and a type. So you say, here's what I'm gonna call it, and here's the kind of data it's gonna hold. And then when you actually create it, you could give it a size. Okay, now at declaration, an array gets specified by square brackets either before or after the name. So if you wanted to declare an array of type int called numbers, you could do it int square brackets numbers or int numbers square brackets. Now, most things in Java, there's one and only one way to do it. But with arrays, it lets you do it either way. This is very strange. This is very unusual for Java. Reason is, there's a language called C++ that I have occasionally mentioned. Some of you may have some experience in it. Very similar, uh, but at least at the time, I haven't coded C++ in a while, so for all I know, they've changed the uh, specifications on that. But C++, you had to put the array brackets after the variable name. What always made more sense to me, right, the way Java wants you to do it, is you say, I have a thing called numbers, and it is a thing of type array int, right, an int of array. So it made sense for me that you would group the brackets with the int because that's really what the type is. The type for numbers is an array of ints. But C++ did it the other way. And back when Java was first coming around in the 90s, people would have a lot of uh, coding errors like this. The IDEs weren't as good as they are now. They didn't detect these errors. This sort of thing would have people pulling their hair out because they'd look at the code and say, man, everything looks good. I don't see what the problem is. But the problem is, you know, the syntax is a little off. So Java probably lets you do both uh, styles just to 
make it easier for people to code and not want to quit Java entirely. Now, when you create the array, you have to use, again, square brackets and then include a size. So for example, these two are declarations. Down below, we have numbers equals new int 100. To declare it, you have to give it a size. If you don't have a size for it, the array is null, just like an object that's been declared but not yet created. And the reason is, fundamentally, if we've declared it, the IDE knows that numbers refers to a thing of type int, an array of type int. But in order to actually use it, in order to write up that custom class definition, we need to know how many ints there are going to be. If we don't know that there's 100, we can't write up that class definition. So in order to actually create it, have something that's usable, we got to give it a size. OK. Next thing, multidimensional arrays. So. In one sense, there are no multi-dimensional arrays. They're just arrays that contain other arrays. So if we said multi-dimensional arrays, people are going to think, oh, they have to all be the same size. For example, you could have an array that each element is another array of size 100. But in fact, each of those arrays could be different sizes. And the practical impact of that is if you're doing programming where your arrays are supposed to represent things like invoices, where some invoices have one item, others might have many, you want to be able to have the array elements be different sizes. Anyway, so for multidimensional arrays, you, can, you have two brackets, right? So if you have an array that is itself an array of arrays, you could either do the two brackets right after, before the name, one before, one after, or both of them after. Okay, it doesn't matter. And again, in a multidimensional array, no secondary array can have a size unless the primary array also has a size. So you could say, for example, in the good line here, this uh, array of arrays is as 100 drawers, right? But each of those drawers, we don't know what's in it yet. That's what this is saying. So I can write that class, right? I could write a class like in paint here, right? I could say, okay, I have, three things, or I have a hundred things here. I don't know how long each of these things is going to be, but I know that I'm going to have three of them, okay? But if you try to say, well, each of these drawers is going to have a size 100 array in it, but I don't know how many drawers I'm gonna have, you can't write this class, right? You, you would know what would be in each of these once you wrote it, but you can't write the class itself. That's how come in your code, you have to write uh, the array first, right, the primary array first, the filing cabinet, and only then can you talk about what's in the individual drawers, otherwise you get that kind of error. Okay, so let's start in with a little coding. We've talked, I've talked for a while, but let's put in some code. So imagine, what are we going to do? Let us make, hmm, let's make a simple array of, what, what should we make an array of? Let's make an array of strings. Okay, that's easy. Okay, so every one of these arrays is going to have an array of type string. Okay, that we'll call words. And in just a minute, we'll make another one that's a multi-dimensional array. So for each of these, let's do import java.util.scanner. Okay. So when we create one of these things, We'll say one with arrays. We'll say words equals new string size. Oh, we'll give it a size 100 to start with. Excuse me. And we'll also have a pointer, so int index. So let's give some. Uh, so words is the array of string data and index is the current size of the array. But we're gonna start off giving it 100. So for each of these, we're gonna have an endless loop where we're going to call two methods, okay? So we're going to do a while true. We have one that's gonna be get input and we're gonna going to have another one that's going to say uh, display So first get input, void get input. So we'll say this dot uh, 
words at index equals, uh, we're gonna have a new scanner system.in uh, dot next, next line, we'll bring in the whole line. Okay, so we create the new scanner object, we read it, we assign it to that. Okay, so get user input and assign to words. Let's make a prompt first so that the user doesn't get confused. Please enter a word. Okay. And then we're going to increment index. Okay. So you Hello, professor. In something. We got this thing called index, right? We're going to add it in there. And then we increment it. So more than one thing. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to do display. Oh, these should be. Uh, objects. Professor, I have a question. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if you might have explained this in a previous class, but what is the um, like the purpose or what is the what is index? Is it um, I know we I saw we saw it in a, I saw it in a previous you mean the variable just, index? Yeah, is it? Yeah, the variable index is just the current size of the array. So the assumption here, I have an empty array people are gonna enter an input, I'm gonna track it like in a log file and everything that people enter is just gonna go in the next available spot in the array. Okay, and index is just gonna track that next available spot. So initially, index is gonna be zero. Okay, I could put that in uh, there, but let's, let's put it in the constructor. And whatever somebody enters in, that first string is going to go into index zero. Then, right, so it calls input, then the index is going to go up. It's going to say, I have one thing in here. And so the next index is going to be available for content. It's going to be index one. Somebody enters in some more stuff. You see what, yeah? Okay. So that, 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 that also works with other items, right, that we've used like arrays or something like that, that you can use the index? Oh, index isn't a res reserved word. It's just a variable. It's okay. Variable name. Okay. okay, so there's nothing magic about the word index. I could use I or something else, but index is descriptive. I just need to track of which which uh, drawer in the file cabinet this stuff is going going into. Oh, okay. So it's just like a random name that you gave it. So it can be yeah. whatever you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There's nothing magical about the word index itself. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna do. Uh, yeah. Uh, just for what it's worth, if it is a magic reserved word it's going to be in bold purple like these, like new, see how that looks different, public static void, those I can't use. But main, even though I have to use the word main to start up uh, a program, there's nothing magical about main itself. It's not a reserved word. I could have other methods named name, for example. Same thing for index. Index is just a ordinary variable name. It shows up as blue, right? But int, int is reserved. I can't name a variable int. Okay. So the, the colors here mean stuff. All right, so then for display array, I'm just gonna put in a loop and display the array contents. Void display array. I'm gonna do a four int, yeah, I'll just do i there. i equals zero, i is less than index, i plus plus. Okay, and then, uh, System that out that print line words I okay, and then afterwards uh, I'm gonna print out an empty space. Okay, so here, right? One of the strange things with autofill right, with auto whatever, auto complete, is that if you hit a wrong key, it can do some weird things. So loop through array and print contents to console, and then here, blank line of text. Okay, and also I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, well, 
plus i. Okay, so we'll do this whole thing, which there we go. So index zero will be something index whatever. All right, so let's run it. You can see how this works. Please enter a word. Okay. Aardvark. Okay, index zero is aardvark. Great. Please enter a word. Uh, bird. All right, great. Please enter a word. Uh, crocodile. Okay, so we're adding new things into the array. Easy. And then we can retrieve them. So let's stop that. All we're doing here, right? We have an array. So every fun with arrays object is gonna have this string array. If I want to add something to the array, like forget input here, all I say, this index, right? This particular index of the array, I'm like putting something in that particular drawer. In this case, what I'm doing in is whatever, what I'm adding is whatever the user entered. If I want to print it out, all I do is this. So words.i, if I hover over it, you can say, oh, this is gonna be a string. So since words is an array of type string, any particular element of words is also gonna be a string. And I can just print that out. So when we reference the array elements, we're just referencing whatever data they contain. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put that here. When we reference words I, we mean the string contained at index I. Okay, so that's what we're printing out. Does this all make sense? Questions? How's everybody? Good? Nothing, anybody else? Like I said, if it all makes sense, that's great, but the people I really need to hear from are the ones that are having trouble. So any questions on any of this? Does this code all make sense? Okay, well, moving on then. So the next thing, multi-dimensional arrays. So we'll do that next. Now, there's a shorthand for doing it, right? If we do something like item invoices equal, you know, with two brackets, invoices equals new item, whatever, it's easy to make them all the same size, okay? If I have uh, the same size for the first and the same size for the second, that just means every one of those arrays in each drawer of the file cabinet has the same size. But I don't have to have them all the same size. I can size them all, uh, however I like. So I'm gonna set up two arrays for that. We'll call this fun with arrays two. I'll call, actually I'll call it fun with multi-dimensional arrays, MD arrays. Not to be confused with fun with MDA, which is something that, you know, you cannot really encourage. Okay, so our multi-dimensional arrays are each going to have whoop, two things. So we'll say, uh, Uh, int same size arrays, okay, and we'll also have another one uh, variable size arrays, okay. So those are our two things. Now, when we create this object, they could each have uh, well, we'll I'll show you in a second. So we're going to write a constructor here. So fun with MDA arrays, and we're gonna send two ints. So int SSA, int VSA for our two. So it takes array sizes as arguments. So whatever we do, we're gonna size those. So this dot same size arrays equals new int SSA. Okay, we're gonna size that first one. And the variable size, we'll size it differently. Okay, so this dot uh, variable size arrays is new and it has its own size. We'll do something with that as well. Okay, so again, this one, We are creating the arrays with uh, respectively 
SSA and VSA elements, we have not yet sized the arrays at each element. Okay, so at this point, we're just making a file cabinet. A file cabinet, this one's going to have SSA drawers, this one's going to have VSA drawers. All right, so we'll do the same thing. We'll do a We'll do our import java.util.scanner. Okay, and then inside here, we'll do, uh, well, let's just get some data first. So we'll say, what do we want to do? Fun with MD arrays, F equals new, fun with MD. So we've created the thing. Oh, we need two, two things. So we're going to say int size equals new scanner system dot in uh, next int. Okay. So we'll say prompt. I guess I should have done that before I could do prompt here. Please enter the same size, array size. Okay, so we'll do this, size one. I would do, we would call it same, same size. Okay, and then for our other one, we'll do something similar. variable size. Okay, is that and then we're going to call the constructor with same size and variable size. Okay, so right here we have made our two arrays. Right once we go through this, we're going to make the two arrays. Now, Next thing, we're going to populate them with data. Okay, so populate with data. I'm going to say with synthetic data because I'm just going to do it myself. This is just to prove how the arrays work. So we're going to create a populate method. Uh, we'll need to import a random number, okay, java.util.random. This is useful for uh, random number generation, which we're going to do in a second. So we'll make this populate method. So void populate. Okay. And all we're going to do down here is for same size arrays, we're going to make them all same size 10. Okay. So that's easy to do. So we'll say same size arrays equals new and what? Uh, same size arrays dot length and say six. Okay, so we're going to say create same size array as new array with the same size and each element has six as an array of size six. Okay, so if we wanted to declare it that way, if we wanted to say every one of these arrays, right, these subarrays and same size arrays, they're the same size, we do it this way. On the other hand, we'll do the same thing with variable, right? So we're gonna create variable size arrays as a new array with the same size, right? So we're going to use the same thing. Variable, variable, that's going to be the size of the first array, how many drawers the file cabinet has. But then each element is going to have an array of size zero to 10. Okay, so we're going to say here, uh, new 
random times 11, and we're going to have to typecast that to an end. Right, new random dot next int 11. I gotta pull this down. Okay, so I'll say this uh, random dot next int x returns a value between zero and x minus one. So we want a number between zero and 10, we can do that. Okay, so this is our stuff. This is our, uh, our arrays. And then I can display the array contents. Okay, so each one of these, I'm gonna populate them with, with data. Say so, loop to fill with data. For each uh, index in the array, I'm just gonna give it the same size. So to make a loop going through, we do i equals zero, i is less than same size arrays dot length, i plus plus. Inside that, we're gonna do another array, another loop. So for int j equals zero, j is less than same size arrays i dot length. Okay, and then with in each of those, uh, same size arrays i j equals j. Okay, so I'll say here uh, values assigned arbitrarily. Okay, j has no particular meaning here. I just wanted to fill it just, just that each will be different. So I'll walk through this loop here. So each of the, this, right, this part here, loop through the outer or primary array. That has same size array, same size array as the filing cabinet. Its length is the number of drawers. Okay, so if same size arrays is a filing cabinet, then same size arrays dot length is the number of drawers in it. Okay, this, the length of an element in same size arrays is the size of the array at that element, okay? And we're referencing at that element, same size arrays i. Okay, so these are two different things. So if we reference same size arrays dot length, we mean the whole filing cabinet, how many drawers the filing cabinet has. If we reference same size arrays i, that's a particular element, that is a particular drawer. And its length is the length of the array in that drawer, okay? Or the length of the array in drawer i of same size arrays. Okay, does this make sense what I'm talking about with multi-dimensional arrays? I hope it does. This is about as complex as anything's gonna get. It's a little bit of a weird thing to wrap your head around the first time you see it. All right, but anyway, what I'm gonna do here is then very similar code for uh, variable size arrays. You think there would be a shortcut for that. Okay, so variable, all I'm gonna do here, okay, ta-da. So same thing, again, this second part, we loop through the variable size arrays, 
for each of those, we assign it's however long each array is, we could, uh, you know, assign a value to that. So once again, if we're referencing variable size arrays that length, we mean the number of drawers in variable size arrays filing cabinet. If we reference a particular element in variable size arrays, we mean the size of the array at that particular element. Okay, so this seems like a good place to stop because our time is pretty much out. So we've introduced what? We've introduced a few things, right? Things we have covered. Number one, what arrays are and why we need them. Okay, so if that much makes sense, that's good. Okay, number two, how to declare and create regular, you know, regular arrays of objects or primitives. And then, right, how to declare and create uh, multidimensional arrays, arrays of arrays. And then four, how to reference entire arrays or their individual elements. Okay, this is it. And this, if you understand this, this is pretty much the end of basic Java syntax. There's a few things we haven't covered, but this is pretty much it. You now know the syntax of the language. We have covered all the building blocks. What is the rest? Well, the rest of it, what's next? Well, we're still gonna fill out the, finish off the array lecture, but next, learning classes, right? What they are, what they can do, that sort of thing, okay? But we have all the building blocks now. We have enough stuff to write programs. If this were a construction analogy, we'd say, you know what? You know how to use a hammer, how to use a wrench, how to use a jackhammer, a power saw, whatever. You know these things. You can go build stuff now. That's where we are, if you get it. And if you don't get it, you should go back and review it. Because you don't want to know, you don't want to be the guy who's trying to build something and you don't know how to use a wrench. There's no future in that. Okay, questions on any of this? Our time has run out, which is good. We want to use the time we have, but oh, I should have added a fellow. That's it. I'm going to stop.